Hello, and welcome to DockerCon 2021. We're incredibly excited to have more than 80,000 of you join us today from all over the world. As was last year, this year DockerCon is 100% virtual and 100% free, so as to enable as many community members as possible to join us. Now, 100% virtual is also an acknowledgement of the continuing global pandemic, in particular, the ongoing tragedies in India and Brazil. Now, the Docker community is a global one, and on behalf of all DockerCon attendees, we are donating $10,000 to UNICEF to support efforts to fight the virus in those countries. Now, even in those regions of the world where the pandemic is being brought under control, virtual first is the new normal. It's been a challenging transition. This includes our team here at Docker. And we know from talking with many of you that you and your development teams are challenged by this as well. So to help application development teams better collaborate and ship faster, We've been working on some powerful new features, and we thought it would be fun to start off with a demo of those. How about it? Want to have a look? All right, then. Without further delay, I'd like to introduce Yui Cao and Ben Gotch. Over to you, Yui and Ben. Morning, Ben. Thanks for jumping on real quick. No worries, Yui. Have you seen the email from Scott? The one about updating the Docs landing page to make the DockerCon banner more prominent. Yeah, I've got something working on my local machine. I haven't committed anything yet. I was thinking we could try um, uh, that new Docker Dev Environments feature. Yeah, that's cool. So if you hit the share button, what it should do is it'll take all of your code and the dependencies and the image you're basing it on and wrap that up as one image for me. And I can then just run it on my machines that have been one click. And I can then have it side by side along with the changes I've been looking at as well. So I was also having a bit of a look. And then I can really see how it differs to what I'm doing. Maybe I can combine it to do the best of both worlds. Sounds good. Uh, let me get that over to you. Awesome. Yeah, if you ping me the image name, I'll get that started up. All right, send, send it over. Cheers, Yui. OK, great. Let's have a quick look at what Yui was doing then. So I've been messing around, seeing what I could do with the banner. I've got Moby at the top here, and I think it looks pretty cool. But let's just grab that image from Yui and get that started in our dev environment. So what this is doing is just going to grab the image down, which will contain all of her code, the dependencies, and the Git branch she's working on. And I'll get that opened up in my IDE, ready to use. So if we hit close, we can see I've got my new dev environment. There's my Molly image just coming down there. And I've got my new IDE. So what we'll do, we'll load this up, and it'll just connect to my dev environment. There we go. It's connected to the container. So we're working all in the container here. And now, if we give it a moment, what we'll do so we'll see what changes Yui's been making as well in the code. So it looks like she's been working on the landing page as well. And it looks like she's been changing the banner as well. So let's get this running and see what she's actually doing and how it looks. So we'll start up our Jekyll server, and then we'll see how that works. Great. So that's now up and running. So let's just have a look at what Yui was doing what changes she had made, compare those to mine. So if I just jump back into my dev container UI, we see that I've got both of those running side by side with my changes and use changes. And okay, so she's put Molly up there rather than Moby. It looks like we have the same idea. So I think I know a way I can make us both happy. So if we just jump back into mine, what we'll do is we'll just add Molly and Moby in here. We'll save that. And what we can see is because I'm just working within the container rather than having to do sort of rebuild of everything, the Jekyll server will just reload my content, load that straight into the page. So what I can then do is I can come over to my browser here. Once that's all refreshed, refresh the page once, hopefully, maybe twice. We should then be able to see, if we refresh it, we should be able to see that we get Molly and Moby come up. So there we go. We've got Molly and Moby. So what we'll do now is we'll just grab that state that's in. This is our image. And then we'll just create one of those to share with Yui. We'll hit a share and I'll get a link for that. I guess we'll send that back over to Yui. Hey, Yui. So I've had a look at what you were doing and I've actually got a change I think that might work for both of us. I wondered if you could take a look at it if I send it over. Sounds good. Let me grab the link. Yeah, it's a dev environment link again. So if you just open that back in the Docker dashboard, you should be able to open up the code that I've changed and you can just run it the same way you normally do. And that shouldn't interrupt what you're already working on because it'll be able to run side by side with your other branch you already got. Got it. Got it loading here. 
Well, that's great. It's Molly and Movie together. I, I love it. I think we should chip it. Awesome. I guess let's chip it and get on with the rest of DocCon. Wasn't that cool? Thank you, Yui. Thanks, Ben. Everyone, we'll have more on this later in the keynote, so stay tuned. As I said earlier, we've all been challenged by this past year. Whether the COVID pandemic, the complete evaporation of customer demand in many industries, unemployment, or business bankruptcies, we've all been touched in some way. And yet, even amidst these tragedies, last year we saw multiple sources of hope and inspiration. For example, in response to COVID, we saw global communities, including the tech community, rapidly innovate solutions for analyzing the spread of the virus, sequencing its genes, and visualizing infection rates. In fact, development teams collaborating on solutions for COVID have created more than 1,400 publicly shareable images on Docker Hub. As another example, we all witnessed the historic landing and exploration of Mars by the Perseverance rover and its Ingenuity drone. Now, what's common in these examples? These innovative and ambitious accomplishments were made possible not by any single individual, but by teams of individuals collaborating together. The power of teams is why we've made development teams central to Docker's mission, to build tools and content development teams love, to help them get their ideas from code to cloud as quickly as possible. One of the frictions we've seen that can slow down development teams is that the path from code to cloud can be a confusing one riddled with multiple point products, tools, and images that need to be integrated and maintained in an automated pipeline in order for teams to be productive. That's why a year and a half ago, we refocused Docker on helping development teams make sense of all this. Specifically, our goal is to provide development teams with the trusted content, the sharing capabilities, and the pipeline integrations with best of breed third-party tools to help teams ship faster. In short, to provide a collaborative application development platform everything a team needs to build, share, and run great applications. Now, as I noted earlier, it's been a challenging year for everyone on our planet. And it's been similar for us here at Docker. Our team had to adapt to working from home, local lockdowns caused by the pandemic, and other challenges. And yet, despite all this, together with our community and ecosystem partners, we accomplished many exciting milestones. For example, in open source, Together with the community and our partners, we open sourced or made major contributions to many projects, including OCI distribution and the Compose plugins. Building on these open source projects, we added powerful new capabilities to the Docker product, both free and subscription. For example, support for WSL2 and Apple Silicon and Docker Desktop, and vulnerability scanning, audit logs, and image management in Docker Hub. And finally, Delivering an easy to use, well-integrated development experience with best of breed tools and content is only possible through close collaboration with our ecosystem partners. For example, this last year, we had over 100 commercial ISVs join our Docker Verified Publisher Program and over 200 open source projects join our Docker Sponsored Open Source Program. As a result of these efforts, we've seen some exciting growth in the Docker community in the 12 months since last year's DockerCon. For example, the number of registered developers grew 80% to over 8 million. These developers created many new images, increasing the total by 56% to almost 11 million. And the images in all these repositories were pulled by more than 13 million monthly active IP addresses, totaling 13 billion pulls a month. Now, while the growth is exciting, by Docker, we're even more excited about the stories we hear from you and your development teams about how you're using Docker and its impact on your businesses. For example, cancer researchers and their bioinformatics development team at the Washington University School of Medicine needed a way to quickly analyze their clinical trial results and then share the models, the data, and the analysis with other researchers. They use Docker because it gives them the ease of use, choice of pipeline tools, and speed of sharing so critical to their research, and most importantly, to the lives of their patients. Stay tuned for another powerful customer story later in the keynote from Matt Falk, VP of Engineering at Orbital Insights. So with this last year behind us, what's next for Docker? The challenge of this last year forced changes in how development teams work that we felt for years to come. And what we've learned in our discussions with you will have long lasting impact on our product roadmap. One of the biggest takeaways from those discussions is that you and your development team wanna be quicker to adapt to changes in your environment so you can ship faster. 
So what is Docker doing to help with this? First, trusted content. Development teams that can focus their energies on what is unique to their businesses and spend as little time as possible on undifferentiated work are able to adapt more quickly and ship faster. In order to do so, they need to be able to trust other components that make up their app. Together with our partners, Docker is doubling down on providing development teams with trusted content and the tools they need to use it in their applications. Second, remote collaboration. On a development team, asking a coworker to take a look at your code used to be as easy as swiveling their chair around. But given what's happened in the last year, that's no longer the case. So, as you and Ben hinted in the demo at the beginning, you'll see us deliver more capabilities for remote collaboration within a development team, and we're enabling the development team to quickly adapt to any team configuration, all on-prem, hybrid, all work from home, helping them remain productive and focused on shipping. Third, ecosystem integrations. Those development teams that can quickly take advantage of innovations throughout the ecosystem, instead of getting locked into a single monolithic pipeline, they'll be the ones able to deliver apps which impact their businesses faster. So together with our ecosystem partners, we are investing in more integrations with best of breed tools to provide integrated automated app pipelines. Furthermore, we'll be providing more public APIs and SDKs to enable ecosystem partners and development teams to roll their own integrations. We'll be sharing more details about remote collaboration and ecosystem integrations later in the keynote. But I'd like to take a moment to share what Docker and our partners are doing for trusted content. Providing development teams access to content they can trust allows them to focus their coding efforts on what's unique and differentiated. To that end, Docker and our partners are bringing more and more trusted content to Docker Hub. Docker official images are 160 images of popular upstream open source projects that serve as foundational building blocks for any application. These include operating systems, programming languages, databases, and more. Furthermore, these are updated, patched, scanned, and certified frequently, such that no image is older than 30 days. Docker verified publisher images are published by more than 100 commercial ISVs. The image repos are explicitly designated verified so that developers searching for components for their app know that the ISV is actively maintaining the image. Docker-sponsored open source projects announced late last year features images from more than 200 open source communities. Docker sponsors these communities through providing free storage and networking resources and offering their community members unrestricted access. Private repos for businesses allow businesses to update and share their apps privately within their organizations using role-based access control and user authentication. And finally, public repos for communities enable community projects to be freely shared with anonymous and authenticated users alike. And for all these different types of content, we provide services for both development teams and ISVs. For example, vulnerability scanning and digital signing for enhanced security, search and filtering for discoverability, packaging and updating services, and analytics about how ISV's products are being used. All this trusted content we make available to development teams for them directly to discover, pull, and integrate into their applications. Now, our goal is to meet development teams where they live. So for those organizations that prefer to manage their internal distribution of trusted content, we've collaborated with leading container registry partners. We announced our partnership with JFrog late last year, and today, we're very pleased to announce our partnerships with Amazon and Mirantis for providing an integrated seamless experience for, joint, for our joint customers. Lastly, the container images themselves and this end-to-end -end flow are built on open industry standards, which provide development teams with flexibility and choice. A trusted content enables development teams to rapidly build apps by letting them focus on their unique differentiated features and use trusted building blocks for the rest. We'll be talking more about trusted content as well as remote collaboration and ecosystem integrations later in the keynote. Now, ecosystem partners are not only integral to the Docker experience for development teams, they're also integral to a great DockerCon experience. But please join me in thanking our DockerCon sponsors and checking out their talks throughout the day. I also wish to thank some others. First up, the Docker team. Like all of you, this last year has been extremely challenging for us, but the Docker team rose to the challenge 
and work together to continue shipping great product. The Docker community of captains, community leaders, and contributors. With your welcoming of newcomers, enthusiasm for Docker, and open exchanges of best practices and ideas, Docker wouldn't be Docker without you. And finally, our development team customers. You trust us to help you build apps your businesses rely on. We don't take that trust for granted. Thank you. In closing, we often hear about the 10X developer, capable of great individual feats that can transform a project. But I wonder if we as an industry have perhaps gotten this wrong by putting so much emphasis on weight on the individual. As discussed at the beginning, great accomplishments like innovative responses to COVID-19, like landing on Mars, are more often the results of individuals collaborating together as a team, which is why our mission here at Docker is to deliver tools and content developers love that help their teams succeed and become 10x teams. Thanks again for joining us. We look forward to having a great DockerCon with you today, as well as a great year ahead of us. Thanks and be well.